So today I'm going to show you two ways that you can put power in your garden or your plot by not connected to the mains. I'm Danny and this is The Grapevine Garden. So I thought it'd be wise to show you what I'm going to be using for this build. Now you might not want to use all of these things because you might just be doing lights. So I thought I'd cover all bases. Let's go. So you will definitely need a solar panel. This is a 100 watt one. Uh, you won't need something this big if you're just going to be putting some lights on in your shed. On the Grapevine Garden, I've got a really small one. I'll put up a link in there as well. So I'll put, I'll put, actually put two listings. I'll put one for what I'm using on the Grapevine Garden if you just want lights. And then if you want something here that you want plug sockets and things like that, then I'll do, I'll do both in the description for you. But this one is a 100 watt one. I think the one down there is like half the size of that or maybe even smaller. I think it might be like a 40 or 50 watt one. So this is a 100 watt one. And let me show you what else you'll need. So I'm using a 100 watt one because obviously I want a little bit more power going into the battery. Then I'm going to need a switch. Now you don't need these ones on the Grapevine Garden again. I've just got a normal garden switch. I'll put a picture up now and show you that what I've got down the Grapevine Garden. But these ones are a bit more fancy. I had them in a sale I think last year and there's a few more switches on them. And the reason that is because I'm going to put some in the poly tent as well. You will also want some wire. So I've got this 20 meters van and boat wire. So that's the one I bought. Again, I'll put it all in the link in the description. You'll need some brackets to attach the solar panel to the roof. So you'll also need a solar power controller. And what that does is, so the solar panels on the roof, them two wires that come down, negative and positive, they go into here. And then from this then, it relays out to your lights and also to your battery if you want to start charging as well. Let's talk about batteries. So I'm going with a leisure battery because obviously I wanted a power inverter in here and um, I want to obviously be able to use plugs. But if you just want some lights, there is other options. So for the first six months on the Great Vanguard, and I had this one, it's a 12 volt, 7 amp hour um, battery. And I think you use them in like, um, you know, those cars that the little kids that drive around in and things like little go-karts. So I'll pop a link in the description for one of those as well. So if you just want lights, this is enough really just for, you know, just for powering some lights on your shed. And obviously you'll need some lights as well. So just remember that you only want 12 volt um, lights as well. So I've gone with these LED strips. I've used these in the greenhouse, in my sheds, in the chicken coop, in the potting shed, everywhere. But you can also get these like LED strip ones as well if you want. But I've always found that these tend to lose their stickiness after a while, you know, because in the shed it gets a bit warm. But I bought it anyway just to show you. You'll also need like a screwdriver as well because when you're fitting this up, you need a really, really fine screwdriver and you definitely want a plastic handle. So I got one of those as well. And obviously some insulation tape. Now the last thing is you can either use like those little chock block things, but I got these and then you tend to put the wires in. Let me show you. So you push these down and put the wires in and then they clamp shut. And on this other side, then it does the same thing. And I found these have been okay just for adding lights and stuff into your shed. And then I just put some insulation tape over the top. I'm also going with a power inverter, like I said. So this will connect onto the battery and then I can use it for um, USBs. And I also have got three plug sockets on as well. But again, if you don't want to, you don't need to buy one of those. So I think I'll do different listings. So I'll put um, in the description one saying just for lights and then that's everything you'll need just to put lights in your shed. And then underneath that I'll put adding extras and then that's if you want to add plug sockets, USBs and things like that as well into your shed. So use the first part for if you just want to put lights in your shed and then add the extras on if you want to put power into it as well, more power. So right, let's get this built. Now, these are only advisories, so obviously take a look at manuals as well. So read all the manuals that you buy when you purchase all this stuff. But this is just the way I do it. Um, if you want to have trunking on the wall to hide all the wires and stuff as well, that's obviously a good idea as well. I'm going to be doing the same thing on you, but I need to pop out and get some of that. So I'm just going to wire it all up today so I can just show you how I've done it. So first things first, let's get the panel on the roof and then I can just run the wires through and then I'll show you how I've set it all up inside.
So this part is kind of finished now. So in a nutshell, from the solar panel, two wires come down into the solar charger. And then from there then you have two wires that go down into the battery. And obviously when the sun's out, the solar panel charges, charges the battery, stores the energy. And then from there then I've got two wires that come out and I've got it onto a bit more of a control panel, but you can just have it go into two wires off into a light bulb. I'll put all the links in the description as well of the things that I bought. I know this has probably thrown a few people because obviously I've got a control panel because I wanted more than one light switch and stuff. But if you're just doing one switch, it's so much easier. You just put the two wires in there and then this little red button here, you just turn on and then that turns the lights on and off. So you don't even need a light switch, which is perfect. But I obviously wanted light switches for um, the lights inside, outside, the pump that's gonna go into the pond, a new pump um, for the waterfall. And then also I wanted to be able to turn the power off on the poly tunnel as well. So if I don't need poly, you know, power in the poly tunnel, I don't need to put it down there. So that's just more of a fail safe um, because you know, anyone could go in there and just turn it on or whatever. So I did not drain the battery, but that's kind of why I wanna have it all, you know, stuck in here so that I can kind of control where the power is going to. But yeah, in a nutshell then, from the battery then, I had a solar power inverter, and then that's where you can plug your sockets in and stuff like that. So it's not as hard as it looks, but I hope this has helped you a bit. But what if there was an easier way? I've teamed up with Blue Etty to show you an easier way of getting power onto your garden, power onto your plot without having any of that fuss. Stay tuned. So Bluetti has sent me the EB55 power bank and also a 200 watt solar panel that folds up, it's in a nice carry case and you can just take it anywhere, it'd be perfect for the beach, perfect for camping and also when I have my camper van, an amazing thing to bring along so I'll have power so I can power things up in the, in the camper van. So all you do is set up the solar panel, fold it up in your garden or at your allotment, and then just plug it into the back of the EB55, or there's other versions as well. So I'll pop a link in the description so you can take a look at those as well, because prices vary, um, and the more power you have, obviously the more the price will be, but the EB55 will be perfect for my allotment. So like I said, all I did was put out the panel, plug it in and it started charging. Uh, you can also charge it at home via the mains or also charge it up via a cigarette lighter in your car. So there'll always be ways that you can actually charge your battery. I'm gonna mainly use it for solar power because I want it to be as off grid as I can. So I think this is absolutely fantastic. and It is a massive game changer for this channel. It means I can plug it into the shed, bring it over. I will have the solar panel kits up there as well because if I don't bring it over, I still wanna be able to just plug my, my uh, phone in and stuff to charge and have the radio going. But when I wanna use my laptop on rainy days and I'm doing some work in there editing, I can do that now. And the good thing about this as well is that if you don't want to faff up having a solar panel on your shed, running all the wires through, getting yourself a leisure battery, an inverter, and then all the cables, all the switches, this is perfect. All it is is plug and play. You can either charge it at home and then bring it over to your allotment or somewhere where you need it, like camping, and also, you know, like things like the beach as well. Then you've just got to bring this and that's all you need. Um, and I actually prefer this setup now. The prices vary, like I said, the more power you have, the more the price goes up. But this for me is absolutely perfect and it's gonna be a game changer for the channel. So I'm so excited to be trying out for the next couple of months and I'll, I'll keep you updated as well. But if you wanna go down the, the, you know, the line of putting the solar panel on, having a fixed amount of power and having a leisure battery and all, I'm gonna do that anyway, because I've already bought it all. But Bluetti sent me this as well and I actually contacted them and I wanted a new way of showing you, you know, you guys, how to do it as well and I've seen these a long time ago so I contacted them and they were quite happy to send me one of these to show you all the, the solar panel as well perfect for bringing it out pop it out and then you, you'll have continuous charge going through as well but for now it's fully charged I did it at home I pl plugged it in it was in my garden for, uh, most of the day and it was fully charged but yeah free energy as well so I can now use it on the plot so over time, I know that I'm just going to go to the Bluetti and that'll be the perfect go-to. I can just bring it over, plug up my camera batteries, because that's one thing that happens over here. I'm over here filming all day and the batteries don't last that long. And I'm like, oh, I have to come back over the another day. But now I got the chance that when I've got one in the camera, I can have the other two or three plugged in, in the shed, charging all day long.
And the good thing about this one as well is it's got a 15 watt wireless charging point on the top as well. So I just pop my phone on the top and then I won't have to be using that USB-C that I'm gonna be using for my laptop. It's freed up and I just pop it on the top and while I'm gardening and stuff, my phone is keeping fully charged. And there's nothing worse than being at the plot all day, using all your phone battery, and then you have to head out to do things like a meal and stuff, and your phone starts to die. So I'm happy now that I can keep it fully charged while I'm over here. So another good thing about this solar panel is that you can also click this extension cord that comes with the Bluetti, and you can plug it in and it gives some charge. It's not, not a sunny day at all today, so it's not only pulling a bit of charge, but the good thing about this Bluetti is, I've now, <laughs> how luxurious is this? I've now got a fan in my shed, so it'll keep me cool. <laughs> That is an entitlement, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? That's really entitled. But yeah, so it's I can plug it into this one. So if I don't bring the, the you know the other solar panel over, I can unclip it from this side, plug it into here, and then we've we're good to go. We're keeping this charge as well. So I think the question to ask is which do I prefer? And I have to say the Bluetti. So I I like the idea that it's mobile. I don't have to leave a battery in the shed, which is quite expensive, the leisure battery. That's a quite a pricey thing to add to the kit, I must admit. But with that, it's all in. Yes, that one is a bit more expensive, but there is one on the market about two, 300 pounds. And that's everything. All you need is that. You don't need the solar panels. You don't need all the wiring, the switches, you know, everything else, the inverter. It's all in that little box and you just bring it over. And even if you don't want to buy the extra solar panel, you know, extension part, you can just plug it at home overnight, give it a good charge and bring it over and you've got power over your end to sort your drills out, sort your batteries out and everything else in between. I'm Danny and this is The Grapevine Garden.